Before starting, I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, Brondo, the Thirst Mutilator. It's got electrolytes. A lot of you are asking for an update on my homemade GMRS repeater made from two KG-1000s interfaced together. I promised I would give an update. This is that update. I finally got my Tram 1486 antenna mounted up on the roof. It's been a saga all along. It's been down on the ground most of the time I was doing all of my testing. It took two guys to go up on that roof to risk their lives to get that thing up there. Now that it's up there 40 or 45 feet above ground level, it makes a huge difference. The repeater's reaching more areas than it could before. I'm still getting that 30 mile range in most areas on mobiles and bases. People on handhelds are limited to about 15 miles or so, but the, the range is what I was hoping for. I did have to send back the second loner duplexer that I was using and the XLT that I wanted to use is still not shipping. So instead of waiting, I decided to set up two antennas. When you're setting up a repeater, you either need two antennas placed far apart so they don't interfere with each other or a duplexer. So I got a small Yagi antenna that's directional because I don't care about what's behind me because I've got mountains behind me. I figured I could mount it facing the area that I want to cover. It's got a fairly wide pattern. It's not too directional. So I put that at the front of the house. I've got the big antenna up in the air on the chimney at the back of the house. And with that combination, it actually works pretty well. And because the two antennas are separate, I can adjust that Yagi antenna in the direction that I want it. Now, normally a directional or Yagi antenna wouldn't be the best idea because generally you want to send and receive all around you. But in my case, because again, I don't care what's behind me, I can receive in the front. I have that transmitting antenna behind it so it's not desensing it or interfering with it when it's transmitting. It is working pretty well. In the last couple of videos, I mentioned the heat issue of the heat building up inside the cabinet where the power supply and the radios were mounted. I got a lot of good suggestions from people suggesting how to drill holes and fans and air conditioners and everything to keep the temperature down in that cabinet. Of course, I could just keep the doors open, but as I mentioned, I'm not a savage. So ideally, I would like to keep the doors closed and have it vented well enough so that it, everything doesn't overheat. And I cannot believe that with all those suggestions, all you geniuses out there, not one of you, not one, suggested using the best feature of the KG-1000. The whole reason why I love the KG-1000 so much, I'm a little ashamed that I didn't think of it myself until later, the remotely mountable faceplates. So now what I've done is I took the power supply out of the cabinet, set it down below so it's out of the way, and then mounted the two KG-1000 radios on the back side of the wall of the, of the cabinet where the repeater is housed. That's under the house where it's clean and dry, mostly clean, very dry and cool. It's always very cool under there. That's where I was getting cool air from to cool the cabinet. Now the two chassis are mounted behind there and I've got just the face plates mounted. Why didn't anybody else think of that? You've disappointed me. I disappoint myself because I didn't think about it either. So I've got the radios mounted behind. Face plates are there. It looks great. No worry about overheating now. That also allows me to mount the two radios as far apart because it comes with the cable. The cable that interfaces the two together is like 25 feet long. So now I'm not limited to how far apart I can keep them by being inside of that cabinet. So I can get them a lot further apart and you want to keep them apart so that they don't desense. The same as with the antennas. The transmitter can leak RF noise that the receiver can pick up just like the antennas. And by keeping them farther apart, that will reduce that. When that happens, the repeater can't receive as well because the transmitter, which is transmitting at the same time it's receiving, is stepping on or interfering with the receiving. So by keeping the radios far apart, that can help reduce that. So overall, using two KG 1000 G 50 watt radios, putting them together as a repeater works very well, contrary to what many of the experts said. Sorry guys, you're wrong. Does it work perfectly? No. Would you do this if you were building a repeater for a club and you wanted something that could be on 24 hours a day, seven days a week for years and years and years and work perfectly? No, 
but it does work and it works very well, especially if you're in an emergency situation or maybe you're out camping and you and your buddy have got KG-1000s in your vehicles, park the vehicles next to each other, use the cable that comes with each radio, connect them together, two minutes of programming, and you've got a repeater. So using two KG-1000Gs, available only at buy2wayradios.com, is a good way to quickly and very easily set up a good working repeater system. Not perfect, but very, very good. I'm getting a 30 mile range on it. You tell me that's good enough for me. That's what I was hoping for and it works. If you have any final questions about the setup or how it's working or what I did or why I did it, leave a comment below. Dickhead comments. Let's talk about dickhead comments because most of the people that leave the dickhead comments, they stopped watching a long time ago and they were busy furiously typing in their stupid comments. Dickhead comments, mean and hateful comments, know-it-all comments, arrogant comments, people explaining and answering questions that nobody asked 10 pages long, or this is a good one, gotten this one several times lately, rephrasing the entire video in one big long comment. I just said everything you said, why would you post a comment saying what I just said? Those comments will be pinned to the top. Some of the hateful ones I'll just delete because we don't need more hate in this world. We need less hate and more relating. So leave your comment, bear in mind that it could get pinned. So be careful, be aware, you have been warned. I'll do my best to answer it. If I don't answer it, somebody else will come along and they'll try. They will probably get it wrong. So keep that in mind. Thank you for watching. We hope to see you on the train.